pre-processing and macros. In this session, we we're going to learn C preprocessing and macros. How to use them in problem solving. When you have a C source code, basically when you want to compile it, first you have to go through what you call it as pre-processing. After do process this stage, it move on to the compilation. The C pro the C preprocessor is a macro processor which transform the program into the final stage before compiling. So using these preprocessor directories, we can automatically include all kind of altered final compilation code. So the best example is defined directories. So we have all preprocessor instructions basically start from the hashtag and we define directories using that we can define a constant so for example we can have a constant value called pi with this variable called pi with this value 3.14 so in our program then we can use pi instead of 314 when we compiling it in the pre-processing stage, all the appearance of pi will be replaced by 3.14 by a preprocessor. That's how preprocessing works. So most common preprocessor directory is defined. Sorry, it's include. So as you see, so we are already using that include preprocessor. So other one is defined, we just learn. So the include, using include preprocessor, we can include an external file. Most of the time, we use include preprocessor to include what we call it as header files. In C programming, header files consist of function declarations. So when you implement the library, which has different functions, so we can have the declaration of the functions in a separate file, call it as a header file. So for example, standard input output functions defined in the library has a header file called stdio.h file. So, so the printf is such a function. So if you want to use that function in our program, we have to include the header files. So at the pre-processing stage, what's happened? So this stdio.h file will be put it in the top of the source code and then it go into the compilation state. Samely, in this program, sample program, we have a defined value called pi 3.14. So then we say print this value. So at the pre-processing stage, what's happened? Instead of pi 3.14 will be substituted. So, similar to define, there are several other preprocessors. Obviously, we can define the value, plus we can undefine those values at the middle of our program. So, using undef preprocessor, we can define the value we, uh, value we define, we can remove it or undef. So, for that, there is a preprocessor for undef. So, if you define pi and undef pi, so, and try to compile, it may not compile because now there are no definition for pi in this source code. It define and remove. As I mentioned, so include directory is the most commonly see preprocessing directories in C programming. So using include, we usually include header files. So those header files consist of function declarations. Not only the header files, we can include anything using include directives, but the usual practice is include function declaration to the top of the program. So those declarations are usually written in a file called 
header file and we include that header file into the top of our source codes. After that, the functions declared in this header file can be used in our source code. We have already done that. So as I mentioned, so define a preprocessor is used to define constants values. So for example, high value, maybe a speed of light, C, we can define as a variable or the constant value. So throughout this program, so we could use C, so then at the preprocessing stage, C, the places where appears C will be replaced by the correct value we assign to that. So same defined preprocessor can use to define functions. So what we call macro functions. So for example, so we can define a function called circle area and with a variable r and we say this is equal 3145 multiply r, phi r square. So then in our program, when you refer to R with some value, when you refer to circular area with some value R5, so all the R, all the places we can see the circular area will be replaced by this, and then the R will be replaced by the value we passes to this pre-processing or the macro functions. So for example, so what's happened when you, in our program, when you call circular file, so this place, this one will be replaced, and the where we define R will be replaced by phi. So because of that, simply, we have simple functions, we can use define macro to create those. So this define, define macro can be used to create any functions, any simple functions. So for example, if we want to solve some mathematical functions, equations, so very easily we could use define preprocess. So for example, let's say we have this equation to be solved with different n values. So we can define a function called fn, and the fn is basically n divided three, plus zero, uh, n, n divided by three plus two. So when, when inside the program, when you call F2, so F will be replaced by this, and then N will be replaced by the parameter two. So then we can call F for different N values and get the results in the program. In addition to this basic preprocessing directories, so C provide comprehensive other set of preprocessors directories as well. So one of the very interesting one is if 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 slash if -diff. That means if we define some value, then whatever inside will be executed. So we say if def macro and put the sum of the code and at the end of that code we have to put n if directories. So if within our program when you define this macro this part will be executed. If that macro is not defined so that part may not included at the preprocessing state. Not only definition, we can use if preprocessor. The previous one is if they if check if something defined. Similarly, we can get the negative if, negative preprocessor as well. That called if end if, if not if. It's also available. So if defined as well as if not defined is available. So this is talks about defining some macro. So in addition to this if there, there is a if preprocessor. 
using this E3 processor, we can check the expression there as well, the Boolean logical expressions. So if that expression value is correct, the code in between, if and end if, or else if also available, else if will be executed. So if there are several conditions, we can say if this condition true, this part, else if this part is uh, this condition is true, this section, else if this section is true, this section, finally the otherwise this section and end it. So it's if else ladder. Similarly, we are using if else commands in the program. So we can use if else preprocessor directors. So for example, so we can say if define the buffer size and if that buffer size is greater than 2048 bytes, let's say we have to do something. So then that part we can input here. So sometimes some computers buffer sizes are small. In some uh, hardware, buffer sizes are large. So then using this if, if we can say if this buffer size is this size, this size to this if it is smaller than this maybe we have to do something else similarly when you compile some c codes in different operating systems those preprocessor directories will be very helpful so for example some of the uh, operating system codes are different from operating system to system so windows have some codes os codes and linux has different os codes to do the same thing that might have the different operating or the OS calls. So if you have a C program, which should be run on all the operating systems, then we could use this if or if the free process. Maybe if the free process is better. So we can have define command on the top of our source code to define the operating system, like say, slash define windows, and then, under somewhere in the code, we can say if the windows can do this, else if kind of Linux do this, and so on. So the same source code then can be compiled in different operating systems without any issue. And before the compilation, we have to define the operating system. And then after that, compile a preprocessor will put the correct code to the source file before compile compilation. In addition to those preprocessor directives, there are predefined macros also available for C programmers. Some of the useful predefined macros are here. So for example, date macro will tell you the current date. File macro, string contains the file name. Then line, in, in, integer representing the current line number. And like that, the time will return the current time. So those are predefined macros available for us. So using preprocessing commands or directives, we can create such macro as well as I said, define preprocessor can be used to create some macros, macro functions. So for example, as an exercise, so if you want to solve those equations, perhaps we can use define macro to define those functions. And then we can use those functions in, inside of each other and so on to solve those values. As you may see, there are six functions, mathematical expressions I have given, functions I have given. I won't solve those at the time n equal to and n equal nine. So think how to write three processing macros to solve that. As exercise. So I will show some demo before ending up. So you can do that exercise then.
in order to help you to do this exercise, I will show some demos where these preprocessors used. Okay, let's see the demo now. As usual, I will start my default GCC Docker engine and I will go to my home directory and my program directory and want to write some programs uh, to show you uh, a default uh, preprocessor uh, effects. For that, uh, maybe we will take our first example. I write a function uh, program, uh, um, call it as maybe let's say uh, program uh, name, let's say uh, define c. Since I am going to demonstrate the define. So first in this program, I use into preposition and say kind into h5 to this top of the source code. So that include preprocessor. So we have actually using that so far without knowing that is a preprocessor command. Right. Now I want to uh, define the pi value. So I say pi is equal to 3.14. Oh, simply like that. Then maybe I can write my main program where I do some calculation. So I define the integer, maybe double, double value call area of the list. It is usually two pi r, uh, sorry, pi r scan. So I can say pi Okay. Obviously, I have to define double value r equal maybe 2.3, right? So then I can print that area using my printf command, standard library command. Area of the circle. Well, and then I print it as the two decimal places, and then new line. But I want to print this A. Right. And I turn to see. Right. So let's now compile this program using GCC. There are some errors. A is undeclared. Let's see why. Sorry, I put semicolon here. I missed that. So I save it and compile. Now it can compile, and I run the <coughs> a.out out file. So you see, I got this answer. So define preprocessor has defined a value called five on the top. So in the program, I am using this file. <coughs> if I want, then I can write a macro functions to calculate the area of the circle. Maybe I say circle area. This is my macro function name. 
which take a single parameter up as a radius. My function is pi, which defined in the previous line, multiply r, multiply r, right? So r is given as a parameter. So now, instead of writing the equation here, so I can say circle area and give the r twist like that. So in the other place, in somewhere else in the program, I want to calculate the circle area, so I can call this vector function. So at the pre-processing stage of the source code, what happened? So this is replaced by this, and then recursively, it replaces everything pre we defined, then phi will be replaced by 3.1. So it ended up with the equation before it goes to the compilation stage. So we should get the same results. So for example, if you want to have a circle area of another circle, I can type area maybe 1.2 radius like that uh, instead of r. We can directly type the value as well. Or we can say r1 is this, and then r2 is 1.2, and here we say r1, and here we say r2. And here we can put circles, uh, first one, and then uh, we write the second one here. Like here we see A and B, right? Let's save that and compile the program, great. So we write that, so we get the area of two circles. So you see, using that, we can write simple functions, what we call it as macro functions. So maybe I will show you now uh, how to use uh, if there. And so for that, maybe I write a different program or if then dot c right so i do include my preprocessor stdio dot h and then i define uh, maybe define windows So then here I have my main program, main function, where I say if preprocessor if then win, then I do whatever the things I want to do with the maybe Windows operating system. Uh, so when I, Let's say I just print some statement. You can do whatever you want. I just windows work something like that. Let's print here. But we can do whatever the so many lines or call any functions like that. And then we can uh, say here uh, end it. And Right. So then this printf will execute only we define the constant call we give. Otherwise, it may not execute. Uh, I save that. 
and DCC. Okay, so it gets compiled, and then I run my error type. So you see, print windows here. And now I uh, undo. Yeah, I see and then print official and undefined the windows. And then let's compile it and run the program. So let's uh, compile it. And then uh, run it. Oh, it works. Let's see if it should not come here. Okay, and then I put two ends, so that's why it work. Okay, and I run that. See, nothing will come because. Now I undept the one I define. Similarly, I can define maybe instead of uh, undept here, I say define uh, Mac operating system like that. So then I say this is Windows one, and here I say as if uh, else, right? So I use uh, maybe uh, I use like that if if if. I use perhaps maybe like that, rather defining like here, let's do this. I say define OS, let's do this. And I can define the operating system, which I'm running this program on top of the source code like that. I say if define OS Windows. So instead of if, if now I can say if OS, equal windows then print it as if as if I say OS Mac print Mac and then the ISM as F. Otherwise, like that, based on the different operating system, I can do different things. Let's compile. Uh, compile. Uh, it say Windows work uh, because I define it as Win. So let's say the same code I want to do, kind of compile it on Mac. So I can define my OS as Mac now. Then I compile it on the Mac then, like here, and run it. Hmm? So it's, hmm. 
if voice is this, if if there this and then all right, let's see. Okay, we do this. And we do this. We have to say define uh, Windows. Maybe we say one. Then we say define like it's two. Then we say define that's this three. So we define three key processes. And then I say define OSIS Mac. After that, I can, can compare if OS equal fit, if OS equal math this, else this. Right. Now I define OS as Mac. Then what happened? The value Mac is two. So OS will replace by two. Then where the OS has will be two. Then Windows as one. Well. Then compare two equal one. Then here two equal two. So because we define OS as many. So then this should be printed on the term. So let's compile it and then run it. So you see we get map. So if I change now to my operating system is somewhere here. Define OS as let's say Linux. And there are three if else if if so I should get this plus the OS, right? <coughs> and run them. So you see, otherwise. So that's how we can use if else preposes. So we we can have kind of like uh, uh, functions, as I said, right? All to mathematical functions, we can use preposes. So let's say I write a program called uh, that function dot c. I use in good free processor like that. Uh, then I define uh, function f1 with a parameter n. So I say it is n multiply n plus 10. Like then, so my main program function is the odd value n equal five point two. Then I print f f. One function f one equal I print it with two decimal places and then new line. What I print is f one n. I pass n to this. Zero. Like that. So this is function n1. Yeah, I define it. I define it as a preface. Right. See whether it works. I compile it. That's 
can see. Yeah, I miss something. I miss this semicolon. Yeah. To get error, you don't need to be panicked. Carefully have a look and correct the error. So you see, I get the value. Uh, let's say I want to define uh, another function called f and define another function called f2, which take n as a parameter. If you, if you want, we can use f1 function here like that. I can say f2 is equal f1 plus 30 divided 2 like that. So my then f1 here, I say my f2 then equal I put with two decimal places. F2, then I call here F2 with N. So let me find it and then run that. So you see, this is the value of function F1, this value of function F2. F2 is a function. Function f2 is a function of f1. So as you see here, so like that, we can define any 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 number of functions, mathematical functions using define free processive directories. So maybe you remember I gave a problem in the last session. We had to find it out maximum profit. Uh, when some theater owner kind of increase and decrease the ticket prices. That can be implemented as simple macro functions if you want. I have asked you to implement it using regular functions, but if we want, we can do it with the macro functions. Let's try to do that. I write a, a program called Profit C. I can close. Which file first? Then you might remember. I say we want to uh, find the number of attendees to this movie theater. So number of attendees, I said is the function of price. So let's say number of attendees, short number of attend is the function of ticket price. So I include the price as a parameter. So if the price is 120, number of attendees, we say, so if price is 15, number of attendees is 100. So if the price increase by five, number of attendees is decreased by five, I decrease, ticket price decrease by five, number of attendees will increase by five. So you remember that? I can call it like here. So if 
price minus uh, 15 is the base price. So if price is then let's say 20, 20 minus 15 is five. So I have to find it out how many times those five. One time, if it is increased by 20, then number of attendees increase decrease by 20. So I can say it's multiply 20 like that. So if the price increase, so let's say the price decrease, then it get 10. 10 minus 15 is minus five. Minus five divided by is minus one. Minus one multiplied 20 is kind of, uh, 20 and minus 20 minus is plus 20. So you see it's increase and decrease. So that's how I code it, this second function. And let's see that is correct. So I say here, the price integer, price of the ticket is 15. So then I use the printer, a function. Uh, attendees. Attendees equal, so I say D and call my function. Attendees with Turn zero. So my basic ticket price is 15. And I check how many people will attend. It should be 120. Then this. Maybe this, this is okay. And D correct. See what was there. Expected semicolon before. And this is print. Then. One twenty minus price minus fifty divide by okay one bracket is missing. We need to open one bracket here. So I run the program. So 
Oh, my equation is wrong. Let's see. If particular price is I know one twenty minus price by fifteen, right? Then it divide by five. Then multiply by twenty and right. Yes, Robert, and this is hundred and twenty. It ticket price is fifty. So let me change ticket price to five rupees. Then my attendee should increase by forty. That means hundred and sixty. If the ticket price is increased to maybe 20 rupees, my attendee should be decreased by 20. That's how attendee functions it is correct. Now I wrote a macro to find it out number of attendees. Then in that problem, you might you may remember. In the previous session, I said we need to find the profit. So for that, we need to find the revenue and the cost. Revenue is a function of ticket price. So I define the function then using macro for revenue. New, which is a function of price. price. So that is totally price by number of items. Obviously, I have to put two parameters then here price and n, n is number of items. So my revenue is price multiplied n. So let's see that works. So I create a function, an integer called n that is equal number number of attendees with the ticket price here. Then I want to take the revenue in my revenue function. For that, I have to pass the ticket price and my n. This is number of items. So when I get the revenue at the cost of 20. I got an error. Okay, I misspell it with price. The price, price number. I think everything is fine now. Combine it once. So this is the revenue at the ticket price of 20 rupees. So far so so you see, I define a function here with uh, two parameters, two parameters, and do some calculation. So this is my revenue function. Okay, so similarly, 
I can define the first function. First is the function of number of attendees. As you may remember my problem, so each number of attendees, there is a three rupee cost plus then there is a 500 rupees fixed cost. So maybe I put it in each job. This is cost. So same time I can, then if I, after I define revenue and cost, I can define directly my profit cost. Profit function is take the uh, maybe take the let's say number of attendees then to calculate it is profit revenue minus cost. Maybe two parameters, right? It is a ticket price. I write it as a function of price. Then it says revenue is I know revenue is then price minus number uh, and take this as a day. Right, so that is revenue. Then cost only take also number of ten days with this. Okay, so this is my profit function. I don't need n here. I guess I write my profit as a function of price. So it is a revenue. Revenue is a function of price plus number of attendees. Maybe I, I, I modify that. Maybe I take this revenue as a number of price and then here say, number of attendees price then then I can ignore the second parameter right revenue function like that then cost is, when I pass number of attendees, is return the cost. The cost functions, if you want, I can even pass the price like that. If I pass price to the cost function, then instead of n, I can say attendees. Price, then two three plus five hundred. Then profit is equal revenue minus cost. Then I can just put now instead of number of attendees, I can say price. I arrange this in different way. So four functions. So then I can now 
find it of my of it at this price. Let's see the date works. several functions. So number of attendees, then revenue using number of attendees, cost using number of attendees, and then profit using revenue and cost. So I then calculate a profit at 20 rupees. Maybe if I want to get several times 15 rupees Ticket price is increasing, my profit increase. If I further increase the ticket price, like let's say from 25 onwards, let's say 25 to 30 to 35. Let's see what's happened. see it's increase and start decreasing because if the price is increased attendees get decreased then so i usually it seems i get maximum profit when my ticket price somewhere around 25 like this so you see using this simple macros i can solve the problems which i have asked you to solve using regular functions in the last session so macros can be this uh, uh, redefined user defined macros you see user defined macros we can do so sort of things in simple way similarly there are already some predefined macros available uh, in safe and so maybe I will show you a few of them. I will write a game. Including just want to show you a few examples. Okay. Let's say I want to find, get a date, current date as a string. 
Then there is a pre-processing macro in C or like that. This is already different. It should be dead. Dead. And dead. So you see it printed currently. Similarly, there is a macro for time. So if I want to find time, there is a pre-processing macro for time. I got date and time. Like that, there is a standard ones. And we can write our own ones using default. So as you may see. So it concludes the demonstration as well as this session. So I will upload uh, some exercise to the memories. Uh, you should write your own reprocessing macros like functions, mathematical functions. So when you write those functions, you have to use previously defined functions as much as possible. Okay, thank you very much.